They were like creatures I'd never seen before. Congrats on marrying my brother. Your dress is so cute. But don't you think mine looks better? Oh, come on. Saying that will just make the bride feel bad. It was supposed to be my happiest day. In the bridal dressing room, I was left speechless by my sister-in-law and mother-in-law, who made such comments with a sassy attitude. I was shocked, not only by their condescending tone, but also by sister-in-law's outrageous outfit. A dress so white, it could rival any bride's. Her plump thighs were visible through the silt, and she had fur wrapped around her off-shoulder design. Mother-in-law gazed at her daughter with such affection. My husband, on the other hand, looked at his family with cold eyes. I never imagined I'd face such blatant harassment on my wedding day. It was too much to process. Looking back, it's no surprise sister-in-law's matchmaking ended in disaster, given how she acted even at someone else's wedding. My name is Anaya. I was born in a coastal town and grew up in a typical household. When I went to a state university, I stayed with my maternal grandma, who lived nearby. Living with my beloved grandma, who had always doted on me, was my dream. Her well-maintained old house was a mix of western and ethnic styles with a nostalgic atmosphere. I loved spending time on the balcony overlooking the small garden, chatting with grandma while munching on seasonal fruit. Even after getting a job, I continued living there. When grandma fell ill, I took care of the house, hoping she'd return, but that wish never came true. When it became hard for grandma to live on her own, she moved to a facility in my hometown. I want to take care of grandma, I said, but she smiled and replied, you've done enough. I want you, Anaya, to find happiness. After grandma passed away, I married Jessie, who had always supported me. Now we live in the house filled with grandma's memories, but our supposedly peaceful newlywed life is constantly disrupted by those two women. How did someone with such a plain face and skinny body like you manage to marry my brother? One day, I was asked by mother-in-law to prepare lunch for sister-in-law due to a neighborhood association meeting. Instead of gratitude, sister-in-law greeted me with sarcasm. I just wanted to go home. But if I did, they'd just show up at my place. Ask your brother. Sister-in-law, seemingly satisfied with her own conclusion, said, Well, maybe you two are a good match, since he's not that great either. She then gulped down the curry I made. I bet she thinks eating in tiny bites in front of men is the secret to being attractive. Sister-in-law might seem devilish, but what's terrifying is her lack of malice. She looks down on everyone, including me and her brother, without a second thought. It's exhausting. Mother-in-law, who raised such a sister-in-law, is of course a handful. Rather than disliking me, mother-in-law seems more interested in elevating her daughter by putting me down and bossing me around. That's why she calls me for such tasks. If I neglect her daughter, she'd either call non-stop or ring my doorbell incessantly. It's a living nightmare. Apparently, mother-in-law always said her daughter was her world and never really cared about her son, my husband. My husband claims he was never abused, but he also says he was never shown any interest. His father went on a work assignment 10 years ago and never returned, even after retirement. He still sends money for living expenses, so it seems neither mother-in-law nor sister-in-law care. My husband tries to address their attitude, but they don't listen. After all, in their eyes, he's just another person to look down upon. Seeing my husband deteriorate more than me was heartbreaking, and I often gave in to mother-in-law's demands, which was my mistake. The two of them became increasingly unbearable, and we, as a couple, grew weary. We couldn't go on like this. Determined, my husband and I decided to hatch a plan. Just as our preparations were almost complete, mother-in-law and sister-in-law unexpectedly showed up at our house. It was a hot summer day. My husband was at work. Reluctantly, I greeted them. Hello, sister-in-law. What brings you here? Just because we're the cute sister-in-law and mother-in-law. Does it mean we need a reason to visit? You should fix that stingy attitude. It's hot outside. Let us in. You're so inconsiderate. 
I really didn't want to let them into Grandma's precious house. But to avoid causing a scene, I reluctantly let them in. I served them coffee and some cookies I baked the day before. What? No cake? I'm sorry, you came unexpectedly. Well, it's okay. Your cooking is decent, even if it's a bit plain. That's true. We'll give you that. Surprisingly, sister-in-law and mother-in-law complimented me. It felt more creepy than pleasant. The house is old, but spacious. It's passable. Passable? To me, this house is perfect. Actually, Elle is getting married. Mother-in-law dropped the bombshell out of the blue. Wait, this self-centered sister-in-law? I was momentarily shocked, but her getting married wasn't that surprising. She often bragged about her curvy body and her straightforward approach with men. It seemed to work on naive men, or those looking for fun. So, with the guy you had an affair with? I recalled a man she once mentioned. It wasn't an affair, we just met in the wrong order. It's true love, but no, not him. The one who approached you recently? I just noticed his intense gaze and approached him first. But no, not him either. Who, then? Elle met him at a speed dating event. He's a wealthy man's son. Mother-in-law proudly announced. That's right, I'm having a shotgun wedding with a rich guy. Good for Elle. Unlike your brother, who married someone like you? She added that she's already pregnant, not forgetting to throw in a dig at me. The speed dating event was about three months ago. She probably charmed an unsuspecting man. I feel sorry for him and his family. Did you break up with the other guys? Not yet. They all love me so much, I can't bear to tell them. It's inevitable. Elle is just so lovable. But what really satisfies Elle is money. I had a hunch. But still, I wonder if the child is really from that wealthy man. We want to use this house for our pre-wedding family introduction. Their ulterior motive became clear. I was so repulsed that I blurted out my response. No way! They glared at me and to avoid a scene, I quickly tried to smooth things over. I didn't want to cause a scene, so I quickly tried to find the right words. Uh, I think the groom's family would prefer to see their future daughter-in-law's actual home. But our place is a bit messy, and it's a small apartment. Then clean it up and stop smoking inside. But won't they find it strange if they're invited to the bride's brother's house? When I voiced my concern, sister-in-law said, You're not getting it. We'll just say this is Elle's family home. What if they find out the truth? As long as you and your husband keep quiet, it'll be fine. You're getting married. Pretending just for the introduction won't solve anything. Once we're married, he's mine. Plus, I'm pregnant. It's not that simple. You're so sweet to worry. Why not just make this house truly belong to mom and dad? Sister-in-law's outrageous suggestions left me speechless. Oh, hell, what a great idea. This house is old, but we'll take it. This is my grandma's house. It's not just my decision. Don't you know? Once you're married, everything belongs to the husband's family. I've never heard of such a rule. Well, learn it now. What's yours is ours. So, next Sunday, we'll bring the fiancé and his family. Oh, and prepare a lavish and cute meal. Of course, we'll say Elle made it, and change the curtains to match Elle's taste. We're counting on you, sister-in-law. They left after imposing their desires and conveniences on me. All that remained was my seething anger and a pile of dirty dishes. I'm sorry. We won't let them use it. That night, my husband, after hearing the report, apologized with a heavy heart. Of course not. But even if we refuse, they'll just barge in. So, maybe we should move up our plan. I could tolerate the harassment directed at me, but I couldn't stand them disrespecting Grandma's house. We'll get back at them for all the bullying, so brace yourself. The next day, I made several phone calls. Despite the sudden change of plans, everyone was accommodating. I was truly grateful. Once everything was set, I called mother-in-law. Mother-in-law, I want to ensure Elle's wedding is a success. Can we have a bit more time? We're thinking of remodeling to make it suitable for the couple. 
Anaya, I misunderstood you. You are such a good person. But we have wedding preparations, so hurry up. I understand. We'll be ready in three weeks. Why don't you start looking for a wedding venue? You're so thoughtful, it's almost scary. But yes, we'll leave the introduction to you and focus on the wedding. Was this our first pleasant conversation? And probably our last. Those two fools won't suspect a thing. And they won't come to this house until the day. Alright, we're going to be busy from today. We had a tight deadline. We'd work tirelessly, sacrificing sleep, but it was for our future. Three weeks later, the day mother-in-law designated for the introduction arrived. My husband and I anxiously awaited her call. I could almost see mother-in-law's furious face as she dialed. At 10 a.m., my phone rang, displaying mother-in-law's name. I answered the call. Anaya, what have you done? Mother-in-law's hysterical voice pierced my ears. I thought you'd appreciate it. I prepared a perfect vacant land and meal for you and Elle. You, what have you done? She was probably hurling insults at me, but they weren't coherent. The place she took her fiancé's family to, claiming it was her home, was no longer Grandma's house. I had prepared a new home and meal for them, but it seems they weren't pleased. Mother-in-law's words were still incomprehensible. She probably wanted me to explain the situation to the other party. I'll do just that. I'm sorry if I upset you. Can you put me on speaker so the groom's mother can hear? I apologized to mother-in-law in the most submissive tone I could muster. The shouting stopped, and a refined voice of a woman came on. Are you Aaron's mother? It seems there's been a misunderstanding. Oh, not Aaron? My apologies. So, Aaron finally left his wife for Elle. Or is it Ivan? Phil! No. I listed all the men sister-in-law had been involved with. Anaya, stop it! With mother-in-law's as loudest scream yet, the call ended. They were probably in the middle of a huge argument. Ugh, that felt good. Anaya? My husband, who had listened to the entire conversation, looked at me apologetically. I'm sorry for making you do that. I should have handled it. No, remember? I said I wanted to get back at them. One last time. For grandma's cherished house? Come on, I've explained this. Grandma wanted me to be happy. I love that house, but you're more important to me than it. My mother, grandma's heir, had planned to demolish the house, and it turned into vacant land. It wasn't earthquake resistant, and maintaining an old house is tough. I had insisting on living there because I loved it. But after marrying my husband and dealing with mother-in-law and sister-in-law, I changed my mind. I didn't want them to tarnish that house, but I didn't want to leave my husband either. So I wanted to say goodbye to grandma's house with fond memories. That's why I asked my husband to find a new job and we prepared to move back to my hometown. We just sped up our plans. I had grandma's house demolished and built a small doghouse in the middle of the vacant land, with a tag reading L. It was styled like a log cabin, which went slightly over our budget. I filled a small dish with the most expensive dog food from the pet store. Everything was ready. Grandma liked you. She wouldn't want us to break up because of that house. Anaya, I promise I won't waste the chance you've given me. My husband looked at me earnestly. I made this decision because I believed in him. A year and a half has passed since then. After moving to my hometown, my husband, initially bewildered by the rough around the edges fishermen in the neighborhood, is now even more beloved by them than I am. The coastal town's breeze and the seafood rich dishes seem to suit him. The once pale complexion he had is now gone. Watching him joyfully devour grilled salmon for dinner fills me with contentment. Did you get any emails today? No, nothing recently. They're probably too busy. We haven't been in touch with my mother-in-law and sister-in-law since that incident. My husband's phone is the only lifeline to them. We heard about the doghouse fiasco from a neighbor who was close to grandma. The house my mother-in-law and sister-in-law showed to grandma was demolished, leaving only a lone doghouse. From a dog food dish, there was a luxurious scent of foie gras. 
The two were in a frenzy, repeatedly claiming it was harassment from the brother's wife. After getting a hint over the phone about sister-in-law's questionable taste in men, the fiancé's family confronted them. Panicking, the two couldn't give a straight answer. Later, the fiancé's parents hired a detective to investigate sister-in-law's behavior. Of course, they found nothing but lies and men. This led to a DNA test for the unborn child, revealing it wasn't the wealthy man's. The engagement was naturally called off. The baby's father turned out to be a man sister-in-law had pursued. He was apparently smitten with sister-in-law, delighted to have a child with her, and fortunately, they got married. However, the man's mother was a stubborn woman who adored her son. She was furious that her precious son was taken by an older woman with no morals and demanded they live together. On the other hand, mother-in-law, upset about her daughter being taken, rented an apartment near the newlyweds and seemed to be in daily battles with the man's mother. Sister-in-law, who had planned to marry rich and live a luxurious life, now seems exhausted from being bullied by her mother-in-law and handling household chores and childcare. But there's a silver lining. Sister-in-law's husband adores the baby. So, it's safe to say it's all on them. My husband's phone rings. Oh, it's an invitation for drinks from my father-in-law. Your dad is really fond of you, isn't he? I enjoy his stories, and my mother-in-law always prepares my favorite dishes. I realize now my own mother never asked about my favorites. This is what family feels like, my husband murmured. Don't worry, you'll be the kind of parent who knows all their child's favorites. Saying this, I gently rubbed my swelling belly, and he smiled warmly. I feel like we can achieve that in this home. He gazed at the caramel-colored beam on the ceiling. It's a magnificent beam we got when we demolished Grandma's house, incorporated into our newly built home as a memento of beloved Grandma. It was my husband who suggested preserving the beam when all I could think of was tearing everything down. That's why I chose a future with him. Let's make this a wonderful home, as beautiful as Grandma's. Yes, absolutely. In the quiet coastal town where you can hear the waves stands our small house. This is where we'll build our happiness.